What's going on YouTube? Thank you guys so much for tuning in to today's video. We're going to talk about something that's super important to the aquarium hobby today, and that is the nitrogen cycle. If you have done any kind of research around the hobby so far, you've very likely heard this phrase tossed around, nitrogen cycle and cycling your new aquarium. This video is going to be more tuned towards those who are just getting their tank set up and have no idea how to get this thing called the nitrogen cycle going and off the ground. The nitrogen cycle is key to the health of your fish and also it's key to making sure that you have a good start and have future success in this hobby. If you don't get your nitrogen cycle up and running, you're never going to have success. You're going to have dead fish, you're going to have a rough time, and nobody wants that. If you guys want to have a good start to your aquarium build and you guys want to have future success, these are my top five fish that I love to start any kind of fish in cycle with. Now, before we get into the fish themselves, I want to give you guys a quick rundown of what the nitrogen cycle actually is and why these fish are chosen for this list and why they're so good at serving this purpose. In the simplest terms, the easiest way to explain the nitrogen cycle is the buildup of beneficial bacteria that will eventually help take care of the bio load of your fish. Beneficial bacteria being the stuff that lives in your aquarium, you obviously can't see it, and it will eat and take care of the waste and the debris that your fish produce over their lifetime, which is pretty much known as the bio load. The bio load is what your beneficial bacteria can handle. If you overload your bio load, having super messy fish, having too many fish, having any combination of these things can outweigh what your beneficial bacteria can hold and really harm your fish. So there are several chemicals that this beneficial bacteria can take care of for you, which will extend the life of your fish, give you good success, and is key to having any success in this hobby in the first place. The reason these fish do so well during the nitrogen cycle is while your tank is doing its actual cycle and going through its cycle, it can be very stressful on the fish to deal with these chemicals. Your bacteria isn't up and running yet and hasn't had a chance to break these down. So these fish that we name here are going to be very hardy and are going to be able to withstand these stressful conditions so you can eventually get your tank ready and add some fish that don't quite handle it as well. So these guys are going to be a buffer fish if you want to use a term that way. So these guys are super hardy, they're able to withstand the changing parameters of your water during the cycle and will ultimately set you up for a really great future with your aquarium. Let's go ahead and get into the fish now. The first fish on this list that we are going to discuss is the giant danio. Now danios are an absolute staple in the aquarium hobby, the giant danio being no exception. These guys have really awesome colors with the blues and the yellows and they reach a pretty good size. You're usually going to find that these guys reach about three to five inches when kept in a good environment. They're super hardy, they're schooling fish, so you definitely want to keep them in at least a school of maybe four, even five or six plus is going to be better. And you're going to find that these guys are an excellent start to your aquarium when you're getting your nitrogen cycle started. You should keep them in a 20 long at a bare minimum, but they're really going to thrive at a size of 29 to 30 gallons. Next up on the list, we have white skirt tetras. These tetras are great for getting your nitrogen cycle started because just like everything else on this list, they're going to be super hardy, and not only that, but they're really easy to find. Almost any local fish store will have them, along with your big box stores like Petco and PetSmart. Now, one thing you may need to watch out for these guys is they are notorious for having ink injected into them to give them special colors, and these guys are artificial and are really not healthy, and that's something you definitely want to look out for. Look for a nice pearl white color, a nice rounded belly, and you should have a nice healthy fish. These guys stay relatively small, between two, two and a half inches, so anything 20 gallons and up, you may be able to get away with a 10 gallon, but again, these guys are schooling fish like a lot of others on this list, so you'll want to keep them in packs of four, five, even six plus, so really a 20 to 30 gallon is going to be ideal for these guys. The next fish on this list is another absolute classic and is a real crowd pleaser. We're talking about the tiger barb. The tiger barb is a fantastic fish to get your nitrogen cycle started. Just like the others on this list, they're really hardy and also they're super eye-catching. Their colors are fantastic and if you go to a variety of stores, you'll often find that you have a variety of colors to pick from. Your standard tiger barb has a great color pattern. You have the green tiger barb and also a lot of places have been carrying the albino tiger barb. These guys get to a size of about two, three, maybe three and a half inches if they're really well fed. And these guys can be on the aggressive 
side. These guys aren't really recommended for a community tank unless you have a really large number of them. If you can go eight plus, they tend to leave other fish alone. But if you can't quite fit that many in your aquarium, definitely make sure you don't use any fish with any kind of long flowy fins, any kind of bettas, anything that has a long fin. These guys can tend to get a little bit nippy. We definitely recommend a 30 gallon or bigger for these guys because again, they need a lot of swimming room, they get to be a decent size, and they're on the aggressive side. But even with their aggressiveness, they can still be worked in a variety of settings. They're a wonderful fish, they school like crazy, and they are just a great addition to your tank and I'm sure you guys would love them. Fourth on the list today, we're going to be talking about the Buenos Aires Tetra. These guys are absolutely beautiful, they have a really nice silver body and a striking red tail and they're an extremely social fish, so they're great to have in a community tank, and again, just like pretty much everything I'm gonna mention on this list, they are a schooling fish. So four or five, make sure you get a bunch of these guys in there together and you'll really see them shine. As you can see from this video here, these guys school like absolute fiends, and they love being around other fish, especially in a school of themselves. They are one of the larger tetras. They can get two and a half, three, some specimens even up to three and a half, four inches have been reported if they're fed a really good diet, but they're not absolutely massive. These guys are really good swimmers. They like to swim back and forth. They really like to school when they have a lot of them in there. So length of tank is gonna be the most important thing here. So while I'd recommend a tank size of 30 gallons or higher, you could definitely get away with a 20 long if these are all that you guys are keeping. These guys don't nip too much, they're a very social fish like I said, and they do really well in a community setting. They're insanely hardy, most tetras are going to work really well, but these guys in particular are going to kickstart your nitrogen cycle, they're going to be able to withstand these fluctuations of different chemicals, and they're going to really set you up for a lot of success. To go ahead and wrap up the top five today, we're going to talk about the cherry barb. The cherry barb is another beautiful fish that does really well in new aquariums that haven't been cycled yet. You're gonna find that these guys can withstand a wide variety of parameters, although you wanna keep it as stable as humanly possible, as with pretty much any fish. These guys have a beautiful bright red color, and a lot of the times the photos you see of these guys just don't do them justice. Once you get them in your tank and get that stress out of there and let these guys really settle in, their colors are gonna absolutely flourish. These guys do really well in big schools, even eight or more is best. And the good thing about them is they stay very small. One, one and a half, even the biggest only reaching maybe two inches. So even if you have a slightly smaller tank, you definitely can keep a good number of these guys. They're gonna bring a lot of life to your tank, a lot of color, they're exceptionally social, and they get along with a lot of fish. They get along with long fin fish, they're not well-known nippers, and they're very kind and will swim throughout your tank and are an excellent fish for any kind of community setting. So that concludes my top five fish that are gonna help you kickstart your aquarium nitrogen cycle. I really appreciate you guys tuning in and I really hope that you guys found the video informative and are able to take this information and use it to really get some good success going in this hobby. Having fish when you first get started in here is a great way to keep somebody enthralled in the hobby versus having to wait weeks or even months to get your cycle started before you're even able to get your very first fish. This is a good compromise on having fish that aren't going to be crazy stressed out by going through these ammonia and nitrite changes while your nitrogen cycle kicks off and also having to wait such a long time before you even get to get your hands on your first fish. So this is a great way for you guys to really find that good balance between the two and have a really great time setting up your aquarium. If you guys like today's video, please let me know. Comment down below, shoot me a message, get a hold of me any way you can. I have my social media linked in the bio down here. And also, I wanna hear from you guys. I love getting ideas on future videos that you guys wanna see, things that other YouTubers don't do that you guys have just been dying to see, and anything else that I can do to interact. This is going to be a completely viewer-based channel and I want to hear from you guys and exactly what you want me to film. We've got a lot of videos coming up here in the future, so be sure to hit that subscribe button, go down to that little bell and turn on notifications so it'll go right to your computer, right to your phone whenever I post a new video. Until next time, guys, my name is Sean with Tankaholics TV and thank you so much for watching.